Welcome to Introduction to Healthcare and Public Health in the U.S. Evolution of and Trends in Healthcare in the U.S. This is Lecture C. The component, Introduction to Healthcare and Public Health in the U.S., is a survey of how healthcare and public health are organized and how services are delivered in the U.S. It covers public policy, relevant organizations and their interrelationships, professional roles, legal and regulatory issues, and payment systems. It also addresses health reform initiatives in the U.S. The learning objectives for this unit, Evolution of and Trends in Healthcare in the U.S., are to describe the application of evidence-based medicine and clinical practice guidelines, discuss quality indicators in medicine, Describe the patient-centered medical home and other models of care coordination. This lecture will discuss quality indicators and comparative effectiveness research. We will begin with the definition of quality. When we speak of quality in healthcare, we speak of better patient outcomes or improvements in patient health. We speak of better system performance or improvements in patient care. We also think of better professional development or improvements in the way that clinicians learn and improve their knowledge. In 2001, the Institute of Medicine published a report called Crossing the Quality Chasm, a new health system for the 21st century, in which they defined healthcare quality as the degree to which health services for individuals and populations increase the likelihood of desired health outcomes in a manner that is consistent with current professional knowledge. We know that populations and the individuals that make up these populations want excellent health outcomes. We also know that health outcomes need to be improved by healthcare services until the outcomes reach the point of excellence. This improvement in health outcomes needs to be consistent with the professional knowledge of medicine and practices in a scientific and rational fashion. In order to achieve excellence in healthcare, we need a body of scientific evidence. We need a methodology that is rigorous, scientific, and able to produce conclusions which we can then distill in particular contexts. We need to be able to take these conclusions and apply them to the practice of healthcare. And not only just apply them in terms of improving patient health, but also try to measure an improvement in performance of the system itself. We can also measure if the professional development by clinicians has improved, and we can use the data that has been collected on patient outcomes to bolster and improve the scientific literature to indeed demonstrate if quality of care has been improved. An important organization that is improving the quality of healthcare in the United States is the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality, also known as ARC. ARC is a part of the Department of Health and Human Services. Its mission is to improve quality, safety, efficiency, and effectiveness of healthcare for all Americans. It attempts to improve healthcare outcomes by emphasizing the use of evidence to reduce risk of harm and to improve healthcare outcomes. ARC attempts to transform health research into practice in order to facilitate wider access to effective healthcare services. There is also a mission to reduce unnecessary costs. In order to demonstrate that quality has improved, we need to define a set of measurements or quality indicators that quantify results. Quality indicators may describe processes, for example, percent of patients prescribed aspirin at hospital discharge after myocardial infarction, or outcomes, for example, in-hospital mortality rate for patients admitted for myocardial infarction. The electronic health record is important in improving quality, not just acting as a vehicle for data collection, but also providing the data required for analysis in a sophisticated fashion. Quality analysis is often conducted as a single or series of PDSA cycles. The PDSA stands for Plan, Do, Study, and Act, which are the elements of the quality improvement process. Many organizations also specify standards, for example, an absolute reduction in the number of hospital-acquired infections. Let us now turn our attention to Comparative Effectiveness Research, or CER. 
In 2008, the Institute of Medicine noted that patient care should be based on the conscientious, explicit, and judicious use of current best evidence. A year later, the Institute of Medicine defined comparative effectiveness research as the generation and synthesis of evidence that compares the benefits and harms of alternative methods to prevent, diagnose, treat, and monitor a clinical condition or to improve the delivery of care. In order to study comparative effectiveness, researchers may gather evidence that is generated from research studies and compare drugs, tests, healthcare delivery methods, or other factors. Researchers may look at existing studies or devise and conduct new studies, and may use or develop different methods and sources of data in order to compare the elements under testing. Comparative effectiveness research is particularly useful when new and emerging clinical interventions are identified. Researchers can review the current medical research and synthesize information that helps to identify gaps that exist between medical research as it exists and the needs of clinical medicine. Comparative effectiveness research can help to promote and generate new scientific evidence and analytic tools. It can also help to translate and disseminate research findings to multiple stakeholders, both in the research and in the clinical patient care spectrum of healthcare. Who are the stakeholders that benefit from comparative effectiveness research? They may be patient consumers, clinicians, policymakers, or purchasers. All of these groups can use CER to make informed decisions that will improve healthcare and quality based on reliable science. Comparative effectiveness research also provides information about benefits and harms and can also compare costs of treatments based on outcomes. CER also helps patients and physicians to choose between treatments, especially when more than one treatment option is available to the patient. It is a partnership tool that physicians can use to help their patients choose the best options. Comparative effectiveness research is an essential part of the healthcare reform plan. The American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009, or ERA, created the Federal Coordinating Council for Comparative Effectiveness Research that coordinated CER across the federal government. And was responsible for making recommendations on how earmarked funds were spent. This concludes Lecture C of Evolution of and Trends in Healthcare in the U.S. In summary, this lecture defined healthcare quality and discussed the use of quality indicators and quality improvement methodologies in improving healthcare quality. It also introduced comparative effectiveness research.